What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy, Dark Waters, and I'm about to tell y'all one of my personal stories that happened to me. For those of y'all who don't, who haven't been around long enough, um, and you're new, my Facebook page pretty much gives you evidence of everything that I'm going to say because I post things there and I leave them there for years. So if you go back to my Facebook page, you will see a picture of a white two-story house with, um, it's white and green with balcony and you'll see the balcony from which I did all my early recordings and all my interviews, right? This is the house that I'm talking about when I tell you the story. Well, why am I telling you this up front before I start the story? Because most people think when they hear something on the paranormal online, they think the person's bullshit. Those of you who've been swimming in adult waters, diving in adult waters, doing backflips and floating and um, on the slides, diving into the water. Some of you guys who got your boats with your dark water flags, you guys already know this. But I have to talk to the newbies and get them squared away. But this is one of my personal stories, uh, and I'm going to share it with you. I've shared it on interviews, but I never really shared it in an official format. So buckle up. Here we go. <music> There's something about having a beautiful woman that makes a man kind of glow on the inside. Picture this, I'm laying across the foot of my bed, talking on the phone with my girlfriend, my eyes wide open facing the doorway when I see this 12 foot tall shadow walk out of my son's bedroom, past the door, it looks in my direction and then heads down the hallway. Understand, it's very difficult to get off the phone with my girlfriend because she likes to talk. The only way that I've discovered to rapidly get her off the phone is to tell her that I need to take a shit. So I'm like, babe, I need to take a shit. I'm going to call you back. It grosses her out. She immediately hangs up the phone. And so now I'm standing up, walking out into that hallway, and I see this shadow moving from the living room into the kitchen. Now, now the change in temperature from that bedroom to that hallway has got to be 15 degrees colder and I'm starting to freak out here. Nonetheless, I gather the strength to walk into the living room and peek around the corner into the kitchen and I see that same shadow walking through the closed kitchen door down the steps and into the basement. Now pause. For those of you who don't know much about the dark waters swimming and, and the waters that I've been in, this is very early in my career as dark waters and I didn't really know much about spiritual warfare. Yes, I had a spiritual altar set up in my house right next to the table where I recorded or desk where I recorded and on that altar were candles that stayed lit it was my bible that stayed open um but I had never experienced anything like anything like this at all so you have to understand I'm freaking out and and on top of that it is literally 12 30 at night and there's nobody awake for me to call about this I can't call my sister or my father or all my friends I God forbid I called my girlfriend back until I just saw a 12 foot shadow so I called the only person that I'm cool with in the industry that I know that's up that late at night and that is Heather Wade from Midnight in the Desert pick up the phone rang 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 and she answers that phone with her slow monotone voice oh hey dark what's going on buddy and I'm freaking out I'm like yo Heather I got this big shadow motherfucker walking around in the house, dude. Like, it just came out my son's bedroom. It went down the hallway. It went to the kitchen. Now that bitch done went down the basement. I'm spazzing out. Understand, Heather's completely unfazed because she deals with this kind of shit. And she's like, oh, okay. So, let's talk about this here. What room did you say it came out of? And I'm like, look, it came out of my son's bedroom. She says, well, I'm going to need you to go over into your son's bedroom and uh and walk in there and tell me what you feel so i walk into that bedroom right freezing cold and she says well are your sons around or are they with their mother for this weekend or are they with you and i'm like nah they with their mom's crib they're not here with me i'm freaking out what the fuck is going on and she says well you know darkness loves to attach itself to innocence and so dark this is something you're gonna have to deal with because it came out of your kid's room it didn't come out of your room. It came out of their room. You're going to have to deal with it. And I'm like, yo, how am I supposed to deal with this, Heather? Like, what the fuck am I supposed to do? 
she goes on to ask me more and more questions what's the temperature of the room what are you feeling how do you feel so she tells me to go into my recording room where my altar is and she says look i want you to look at the candles that you keep lit i want you to look at the candles that are lit on your altar are the wicks or is the fire coming up off the wick of the candle is the candles are the fire is the fire whipping around in circles is the fire bending to the left is it bending to the right guys i didn't know nothing about none of this shit i'm just like the candles lit but the closer i look the candle flames themselves are bent over going over the side of the lip of the candle and headed straight down she says well dark that means whatever it is it's beneath you so you're going to need to get your prayer books out you're going to do your prayer saint michael's you're going to pray to jesus you're going to do all your prayers but you're going to have to cast this thing out of your house and there's nobody else that can do this for you you're going to have to do it yourself i love you call me back when you're done and the chick hangs up the phone man when i tell you she hang up the phone i felt so alone it was completely insane how alone i felt because you know i'm i'm in this situation i know i gotta deal with this it came out of my son's room so i gotta like grab my nuts and handle my business right so i grabbed my prayer book which is my saint michael's prayer book go into the living room do the prayer of saint michael that ain't working it's still cold in there right i'm like all right that ain't that ain't working i get my bible i go through my psalms and i go to the psalms of the bible that's known for dispelling and getting rid of dark entities and negative energy and bad stuff do that that ain't work so finally um i just decide i'm just gonna pray myself right so i start praying i said in the name of jesus christ i call upon god's angels to come into this house and help me remove whatever dark entity this is and detach it from me and my family you know i'm just praying but the whole time guys i'm not really thinking I ain't never used Jesus name or Yahshua or whatever you however your people got different names but I use Jesus I had never said his name right but I'm praying and I feel the living room and the entire upstairs going back to normal and what I mean by going back to normal like the temperature is going back to normal I don't really feel that uh, pins and needles feeling on my body but everything below my knees is like freezing cold i mean ice cold like like i'm literally have my calves and ankles and toes inside a bucket of ice water and so i pick up the phone again and i call heather back and she answers the phone the same way she always does oh hey dark how's it going and i'm like well i've been standing here praying and it seems like it's working and the room is changing and things are getting better but everything beneath my knees is cold she says, well, Doc, you, your candle showed you where it was. They're downstairs. It's downstairs in the basement. You need to go in the basement and deal with it. Call me back when you're done. Now, honestly, I didn't want to go in this basement, y'all, because that basement, listen to me, that basement is long. Like, if you saw the picture of that house, you'll see where those steps are, right? Um, everything where those steps are is the basement. But that basement is long. It's like the length of the house. It's shit. 80 90 feet long and the lights are out in that basement like majority of lights there's like one light but when you go down those steps it's like you go through a door you make a left turn you go down the steps you got to make another left turn and it gets small and you got to kind of squeeze through and then you go you emerge into the dark basement now i didn't keep the lights on in the basement at that time because that's where my washing machine and dryer was and in orleans Parish, you know your, your freaking light bill gets high because they crooked so i didn't keep the lights on now, in order to get to the light switch, it wasn't like you could walk down the steps and hit the switch. You had to go about 15 feet into the basement to click on the light switch. So I wanted her to stay on the phone with me, but I wasn't going to bitch out and act like no little broad. I'm like, all right, I'm just going to handle this, right? So imagine me going through the kitchen, opening that door, headed down the steps. And as I'm going through the steps, it's literally like I'm emerging in the darkness. And I'm standing there for a split second like, all right, am I going to do this shit? Like, how am I going to do this shit? And it's freezing down there. When I say it's freezing, this is summertime New Orleans. And we talking about New Orleans in the summertime, it's 90, 92 degrees at night. It's 50 degrees in this basement. Shit don't make no sense. And to make you, un and in order for you to understand, that basement has windows. So there's no reason, and we're not talking about brand new windows. We're talking about old school New Orleans windows. The kinds that 
wooden windows that you lift up and the paint chips off of them and it's crazy right so ain't no reason why this basement should be cold it should be steaming hot anyway I'm at the foot of the steps it's pitch black the only light that's coming in there is the light from those windows which have blinds covering them so it's a little bit of nighttime light coming in and I wouldn't even really consider it nighttime light it's like street light light coming in from the right side of the basement because the right side of the house was the street on the left hand side was a driveway and other people's houses so the only little bit of light that's in there is coming from those blinds on the right hand side and I'm standing there looking and I see this shadow dart from that right hand side to the middle of the room and then backwards and I'm like oh lord Jesus what the hell so I'm like okay I can't have this here when my kids get back that's not gonna work so I'm gonna have to man up and do what I gotta do so now I'm like timidly I ain't gonna lie to you I won't act like I'm a badass I was timidly like walking over to the light switch get to the switch switch the switch on and one light comes on in the room it's one light on the right hand side closer to me which is the light over the washing machine and dryer as that light comes on there's this old pool table down there and the pool table is kind of wopsided but the balls don't typically roll but the pool balls roll on a table like roll and hit like clink like two balls clink and I'm like oh man this is crazy and I'm standing there and I said man I'm gonna have to do this so I start praying and I said well in the name of Jesus Christ my personal Lord and Savior and I think this is what I said because I was so scared I, I can't remember the exact words but I do know I said in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to leave this house and never come back again I don't know who sent you here I don't know why they sent you here but go and return back to them and leave this house as I'm saying that I feel the room getting warmer and for those of you who've never experienced anything that, like this it's almost as if that cold air was met by this rush of warm air and it was kind of like a cold front and a warm front meeting each other right there in the room and it's getting warmer it's getting warmer it's getting warmer it's getting warmer and I'm moving forward into this warm air but sensing the cold air and I'm saying it over and over again and I'm getting a little bit more bold in the name of Jesus Christ I command you to leave this house and never come again don't bother anybody else in this house don't ever come back again so now I'm halfway through the basement I'm right next to the pool table they got and you understand this dog they got boxes file cabinets clothes all kind of stuff down here but I know the direction I'm going because I've been there plenty of times and I get about three-fourths of the way into the basement is the best way to describe I was way beyond half halfway through and this to the towards the back of that basement was this bar that was a you know kind of custom bar that they built and to the right of that bar that bars on your left you know it's kind of like a countertop and they had liquor back there and but to the right of that was this um kind of closet with this curtain but it was a uh, you know one of cloth curtains on it and so I see the cloth curtain kind of maneuvering and shaking and I'm like okay well maybe that's the AC I don't know but something tells me you need to go in that closet and you're gonna have to be brave enough to go in there and dispel this thing so I move the curtain back and it's pitch black in that bad boy when I say it's pitch black there's no window there and if you're looking at the photo of the house that area is directly underneath where those steps are so there's no window there's no nothing so I walk in there and, and I can feel the coldness I feel the tingling on my skin my hairs are standing up and I say in the name of Jesus I command you to go and you need to go now and literally that room goes from being cold to being hot immediately and I say to myself wow I did it I don't know how I did it I don't know how I had the nerve to do it but I did it Head back on upstairs, call my girl Heather. And this is the things people don't know about the backside of the industry in my relationship. I call my girl Heather. At this point in time, man, it's got to be 1.30, 1.45 in the morning. Because I and I'm condensing this, but my cowardice and my fear took a little bit of time to do all this, right? It got 1.30, 1.45 in the morning. Heather, I think it's gone. And she says, Well, Dr. Way, you know if it's gone or not, is um, how does it feel? I say it feels great feels normal she says well go back in your room with your altar where your bible is and go check your candles because those flames you know you're a christian you blessed that altar and you dedicated it to god and those flames will tell you everything so i go back i look at my candles and they normal there's normal 
flames. They're not large. They're normal small flames for what they're supposed to be. I tell her everything is normal. She says, well, looks like you did it. Um, only thing you got to be able to do now is you got to be confident enough to go to sleep. And don't be fearful because it'll feed off your fear, right? I go, um, give me a bottle of water. Give me a bag of potato chips. Lay in the bed and trying to go to sleep. And I can feel that sense of fear coming over me. And I'm fighting it with prayer. If it would come, I would fight it with prayer. It would come, I would fight it with prayer. I think I didn't go to bed that night until like 4.30, 4.45 in the morning. I finally fell asleep. But once I fell asleep, I didn't wake back up to like 10, 10.30. And that presence never came back to that house. Um, it just never showed up again. But I wanted to share with you guys one of my personal stories. And I'm going to share more of these personal stories with you guys uh, over time because I mention and reference these things in comments and in posts and people don't know what the hell I'm talking about. And so it's like, oh, don't want to you. You're playing victim. No, I'm telling you real shit, but you don't know because you weren't there. Now, for those of the family members who were there, you was with me, you was rocking with me. You know, all this stuff is true because I was telling you guys back then. But it's time I lay a lot of stuff out on the table. We're going to go into all the personal stuff that's happened since I've been working here as Dark Waters in this business as Dark Waters. And all of that stuff happened right after my beef with the cult. And this was the beginning of me really learning spiritual warfare. And I'm thankful to the cult and their little practitioners and what they do. I'm real thankful to them because it was them who taught me how to actually use the shield and arm of God to the point to where I can actually teach other people. If I would have never been attacked in the ways I was attacked, then I would have never developed those skills. It's kind of like getting punched in a jaw by Mike Tyson. He swing at you again, either you're going to duck or you're going to block, baby. You know what I'm saying? And listen to me, if you want to share your personal story of what happened to you, dog, man, Bigfoot, shadows, demons, it don't matter. My number is at IamDarkWaters.com. At the top, you'll see where it says for support, call this number. That's a number that leads directly to me. Like, literally, you call it. If I'm not doing something, I'm picking that phone up and I'm going to answer. But you have direct access to me if you want to share your story. So, holla at your boy, Dark Waters. We're kicking up the content train on a whole nother level. And I need as many phone calls and conversations as I can. I got some stuff in the bag, but I always won't put more in the bag. So, I am darkwaters.com today. Use the number on the front of the website. Give me a call. Don't be a fool and call me at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. Because all you're going to do is get a real nasty text message the next day. Because I keep the ringer off in the night in the dark. Because people don't know how to act. But holla at your boy.